The Kaaba is in chaos. What happened there was unbelievable. A single perfect storm isn't enough to bring in swarms of locusts of this size. It takes a series of them, something that used to be really rare in this area. The Kaaba is in a state of chaos after strange incidents happen to the Muslims who run Helter Skelter. Supernatural events such as locust plagues and catastrophic storms continuously strike this sacred land, causing many pilgrims praying there to seek refuge. These mysterious events have made many people wonder about the reasons why it happened, and most importantly, why it happened at this time. Many people are also excited about the mysterious details of the incident, existence of the Kaaba. So what is it? What is the meaning of these strange developments? Before starting, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell button to receive the latest information from Kaaba and the world. What is Kaaba and what happens there? The Kaaba is a rectangular box-shaped structure built of granite 15.2 m high, 10.7 m wide, 12.2 m long, covered with black Kiswa silk embroidered with gold thread on the outside. On the southeast side of the building is a pure gold door. Inside, the floors are marble and limestone, and there are three pillars. The Blackstone Holy Stone is located in the southeast corner of the building, 1.5 m above the ground. Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad once kissed the stone, so they aspire at least once in their lives to make a pilgrimage to Kaab and kiss the black stone. The rock is often described as dark black, about 0.6 m long. Its surface is shiny black. According to Islamic beliefs, the rock was originally white, but turned black because it absorbed humanity's sins. Blackstone was first described in Western literature in the 19th century. A Swiss traveler, Johann Ludwig Burkhardt, visited the Kaaba in 1814 and described Blackstone in his book on Arabic travel published in 1829. It has an irregular oval shape, nearly 18 centimeters in diameter. The top surface is rough due to a dozen crushed stones of different sizes attached by a small amount of smooth cement. The rock looks as if it had broken into pieces, then reattached. Muslims believe that Allah ordered the construction of the Kaaba. This is the oldest mosque on earth, believed to have been used by pagans before the birth of Islam. According to Islam, the Prophet Muhammad placed the stone in the wall of the Kaaba in 605. Muslims also believe that black stone is part of the heavenly stone. There are many legends about it, like when Adam was expelled from the Garden of Eden, he felt extremely guilty. The black stone was given to Adam to help cleanse him of his sins and allow him to return to heaven. Others believe that the stone was taken from a nearby mountain by the archangel Gabriel. The black color represents the humility and simplicity of the Islamic faith, reminding believers of their shared humanity and equality before God. At the cornerstone of the Kaaba lies the sacred black stone believed by Muslims to have been given to Prophet Abraham by the Archangel Gabriel. Pilgrims worldwide strive to touch or kiss this stone during Haji, emulating the actions of Prophet Muhammad as part of the rituals. The Kaaba is not merely a physical structure, but a focal point for Muslims during their daily prayers. Muslims face the Kaaba when performing their Salah wherever they are, fostering a sense of connection and unity among the global Muslim community. So, as the spiritual epicenter of Islam, the Kaaba's significance transcends its physical presence. It serves as a compass for the Muslim world guiding believers in their devotion and reinforcing the concept of Tawheed, the oneness of God. Consequently, the annual Hajj pilgrimage unfolds in Kaaba as a breathtaking spectacle. Pilgrims, clad in simple white garments symbolic of purity and equality, converge upon Mecca. The atmosphere is charged with spiritual energy as people from diverse backgrounds unite in worship, erasing race, nationality and social status distinctions. Pilgrims circle the Kaaba seven times in a counterclockwise direction, a ritual that symbolizes humanity's unity in worshipping one God. 
The story of the Kaaba is said to be laced with tales of devotion and miracles. It is said that when Prophet Muhammad and his followers reclaimed Mecca, he cleansed the Kaaba of idols and rededicated it to worship the one true God. The Kaaba became a beacon of monotheism echoing the legacy of Abraham. It is a testament to resilience having undergone various historical reconstructions due to natural disasters and conflict. Each rebuilding guided by a commitment to preserve the site's sanctity reinforces the Kaaba's enduring importance. However, recently there has been chaos in Kaaba due to strange happenings in the region. But what is happening in Kaaba and what does it mean? Saudi Arabia's Mecca, home to Islam's holiest sites, has seen extreme storms and rain that affected pilgrims, shuttered schools and caused chaotic scenes. Pilgrims doing the tawaf circling the Kaaba got soaked and slipped on the floor as heavy rains thrashed and carried objects around as the rare scenes unfolded at the giant black cube towards which all Muslims pray. Another bolt of lightning struck the iconic Fairmont Maka Clock Royal Tower Hotel and illuminated the night sky. Climate change affects the overall atmospheric and oceanic conditions that definitely then impacts the strength and impact of any particular weather event. It all began with an unexpected turn of nature, a flood that swept through the surroundings of the Kaaba, the usually dry terrain of Mecca transformed into a rushing river challenging the strength of the sacred site. Pilgrims and locals alike were taken aback by the force of the water, which seemed to defy the dry environment that typically characterized the region. Still battling with the influx of water, a locust invasion happened just when they thought they had seen it all. Swarms of these voracious insects descended upon the region, threatening crops, livelihoods, and the very essence of daily life. Historically associated with biblical plagues, Locusts became an unexpected presence in the sacred city. But just when it seemed nature had presented its most formidable challenges, the skies above Mecca unleashed a series of catastrophic storms. Thunder roared, lightning buzzed across the horizon, and rain fell in torrents. The elements joined forces, creating a storm that echoed through the valleys surrounding the Kaaba. Conditions appeared similar to a 2015 storm that fell to a crane at the Grand Mosque or the Masjid al-Haram, the mosque enclosing the vicinity of the Kaaba, killing more than 100 people and injuring hundreds more. Consequently, the Mecca regional government had said that schools would be closed in parts of Mecca, with classes to be held on an e-learning platform. He said it is in the interest of everyone's safety. An eyewitness and Mecca resident, Abu Mayada, told the AFP news agency that he was out buying cigarettes and petrol when everything went black in front of him as the worst storm hit. Another resident, Youssef, said they usually expect strong winds during this period. Still, the recent one was the worst he could remember. However, the recent events at the Kaaba have sparked confusion and speculation about their natural or spiritual significance. One such is the sound of the Qur'an recitation. The recitation of the Qur'an in the Kaaba, Islam's holiest sanctuary located in Mecca, holds profound significance in the hearts of Muslims. When pilgrims approach the Kaaba, one of the most cherished acts is to recite the Qur'an while in its sacred proximity. The Qur'an, considered the literal word of God as revealed to Prophet Muhammad, is the holy scripture of Islam, guiding believers in matters of faith, morality, and conduct. For pilgrims who undertake the sacred journey to Mecca, reciting the Quran near the Kaaba is a moment of profound personal connection with their faith. It symbolizes the culmination of their spiritual journey and a rare opportunity to stand near the sacred structure. Reciting the Quran in the Kaaba is a deeply spiritual and symbolic act it represents a direct connection between the believer and the divine, as the words of the Qur'an are believed to be a direct revelation from Allah. The act of recitation within the precincts of the Kaaba enhances the sense of spiritual presence and devotion. Consequently, during Ramadan, the holiest month in the Islamic calendar, the Kaaba witnesses an influx of worshippers engaging in extended prayers and Qur'anic recitation. 
Lailat al-Qadr, the night of power, is another special occasion when believers strive for spiritual closeness through recitation. Interestingly, recitation in the Kaaba is not merely a ritual, but an opportunity for deep spiritual reflection. Believers often ponder the meanings of the verses, seeking guidance, solace, and a profound connection with Allah. So the sound of Quranic recitation in the Kaaba is a transformative experience that transcends mere auditory perception. There have however been speculations, and the mysterious events at the Kaaba in Mecca have left many people wondering if it goes beyond the hands of nature towards something more spiritual and mysterious. The happenings have been said to be a pointer to the sign of the end times, especially because of the details of these strange occurrences. But are these indeed a sign of the end times, or are they just mere natural occurrences? How are the floods, storms and locust infestation a sign of end times? Sit tight as we unravel the mysteries surrounding each one. The concept of floods as a sign of the end times is a theme that reverberates across various belief systems. Many religious traditions, including Christianity and Islam, contain narratives that associate catastrophic floods with eschatological events marking the culmination of human history. Let's look at the Islamic perspective on signs of the end times. In Islam, the signs of the end times are known as the signs of the hour or Ashrat as sara are described in both the Quran and the sayings of Prophet Muhammad. These signs are classified into minor and significant, each containing specific events and occurrences. While interpretations may differ, some Islamic scholars point to the relevance of natural disasters, including floods, as potential signs of the approaching end times. So, in the context of floods as possible signs of the end times, some scholars reference prophetic traditions that allude to natural disasters as precursors to major eschatological events. While specific references to floods are not explicit in all prophetic traditions, broader mentions of earthquakes, turmoil and chaos are found in various hadiths. The Quran contains verses that describe cosmic and natural phenomena as signs of the hour. In Surah Al-Ankabut 29, 41, Allah says, The example of those who take allies other than Allah is like that of the spider who takes a home. Furthermore, hadiths attributed to Prophet Muhammad include descriptions of earthquakes, trials and tumultuous events as precursors to the end times. Anas bin Malik reported that the Prophet said, The hour will be established once earthquakes are widespread. So, Interpreting floods as signs of the end times involves considering the symbolism embedded in the narratives. Floods, known for their transformative power and ability to cleanse, can be seen as metaphors for the purification and renewal of the earth before the final reckoning. The uproar caused by floods may symbolize the challenges and tribulations that precede the ultimate resolution of human history. Consequently, Recent happenings, including natural disasters or significant events in Mecca, would be a subject of profound reflection for believers. Suppose floods or other calamities were to occur. In that case, the interpretative lens through which these events are viewed may lead some to speculate their alignment with end-time prophecies. The flood is a profound and symbolic motif that stretches across the pages of the Old and New Testaments. Central to this narrative is the story of Noah's Ark, an epic tale of divine judgment, human survival, and the covenant between God and humanity. However, within the biblical perspective, the flood holds a dual significance as both a historical event and a sign of eschatological consequence pointing towards the end times. Humanity's corruption and wickedness climax as the narrative unfolds compelling God to embark on divine intervention. In response to the prevailing evil, God chooses Noah, a righteous man, to build an ark that would serve as a vessel of salvation for himself, his family, and a remnant of each kind of animal. The floodwaters, unleashed as an instrument of divine judgment, engulfed the earth, cleansing it of corruption and initiating a new chapter in human history. So, 
In the New Testament, particularly in the teachings of Jesus and the writings of the apostles, there are references to the days of Noah and the flood as a symbolic sign pointing towards the end times. Here, Jesus draws a parallel between the unsuspecting nature of people in the days of Noah and the conditions that will precede his second coming. The flood now foreshadows the impending day of judgment when God intervenes in human history. Let's see the infestation of locusts as a sign of the end times. The swarming of locusts has often been associated with the end times. While interpretations may vary across religious and cultural contexts, the symbolism of locust infestations carries deep historical and biblical roots. In examining the connection between locusts and eschatological significance, we'll explore the broader narratives within the Judeo-Christian tradition while considering the potential relevance to recent occurrences near the sacred Kaaba in Mecca. The mention of locusts in a prophetic context is notably found in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament. One of the most clear depictions occurs in the book of Joel, where a locust invasion is a metaphor for divine judgment and the impending day of the Lord. Interestingly, the biblical narrative employs locusts as instruments of divine wrath, unleashed upon disobedient nations. Due to their actions in Exodus, locusts are one of the plagues inflicted upon Egypt as a means of pressuring Pharaoh to release the Israelites. Also, the New Testament, particularly the Book of Revelation, contributes to the eschatological symbolism of locusts in Revelation 9. One, three, the fifth trumpet sounds, unleashing a plague of locusts upon the earth. These locusts, different from ordinary ones, are described as having a scorpion-like ability to inflict torment, emphasizing their supernatural and apocalyptic nature. However, in recent times when locust swarms encroach upon regions, including those near the sacred Kaaba in Mecca, believers may inevitably reflect on the eschatological implications. In Islamic eschatology, there are references to locusts as signs of the end times. However, these are not explicitly connected to events at the Kaaba. Drawing on prophetic sayings, hadiths, attributed to Prophet Muhammad, Islamic tradition includes descriptions of various signs that will precede the Day of Judgment. In one hadith found in Sahih Muslim, Prophet Muhammad mentioned the emergence of a creature resembling the ant carrying the staff of Moses and the return of the people of Gog and Magog. While locusts are not explicitly mentioned in this context, the hadith underscores the idea of extraordinary occurrences and supernatural events as precursors to the end times. However, whether in biblical or Islamic narratives, the symbolism of locusts as a sign of divine judgment invites believers to reflect on their actions seek repentance and turn to spiritual preparedness. Both traditions emphasize the importance of righteousness, ethical conduct, and adherence to divine guidance in the face of impending eschatological events. What about storms as a sign of end times? In the Judeo-Christian tradition, the concept of catastrophic storms as precursors to significant eschatological events is deeply rooted in biblical narratives. The apocalyptic book of Revelation, attributed to John the Apostle, is rich with symbolic imagery, including cataclysmic storms. Revelation 6.12, 17 describes cosmic disturbances and people's reactions to these extraordinary events. Here, storms become part of the apocalyptic imagery, signaling the unfolding of eschatological events. Also, in Islamic eschatology, signs of the end times are known as Ashrat al-Sa'a, drawn from hadiths attributed to Prophet Muhammad. So, while the Quran and hadiths contain general references to natural disasters and cosmic phenomena, direct correlations to storms and the Kaaba may require interpretative insight. However, for some, these occurrences are seen to have divine connections which incite a wake-up call for individuals to draw nearer to their God as the end of time approaches. For others, it is a cause of concern that the Kaaba may have been destroyed multiple times and so may not exist. But how true is this? Was the Kaaba ever destroyed? What is threatening the existence of the Kaaba? The Kaaba 
Islam's sacred and holiest structure has stood as a symbol of unity and devotion for over a millennium. While the Kaaba has undergone reconstructions and renovations throughout history, it has not been entirely destroyed. Muslims' reverence for the Kaaba and its enduring presence in Mecca play a pivotal role in the Islamic faith. According to Islamic belief, under divine guidance, Ibrahim played a crucial role in constructing the Kaaba as a house of worship dedicated to the one true God. Now, let's go down memory lane. Before the advent of Islam, the Kaaba was already a revered sanctuary in the region of Mecca. Local tribes would visit the Kaaba for pilgrimage and perform various rituals around the sacred structure. However, over time, the Kaaba became cluttered with idols and artifacts representing different deities, compromising its original purpose. So, in the early 7th century, Prophet Muhammad received the call to prophethood, and his mission was to restore the monotheistic worship associated with the Kaaba. The Prophet's efforts faced resistance from the Quraysh, the dominant tribe in Mecca who were custodians of the Kaaba. However, despite the challenges, Prophet Muhammad peacefully reconsecrated the Kaaba in 630 CE after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The idols and artifacts were removed, and the Kaaba was restored to its original purpose as a house of worship for the one true God. It might interest you that the Kaaba has undergone various renovations and reconstructions over the centuries to ensure its structural integrity. Most of these efforts occurred during the early Islamic period and more recently in modern times during the time of the Caliphate of Abdullah ibn Zubi. A grandson of Caliph Abu Bakr, the Kaaba faced damage due to flooding. Ibn Zubi took the initiative to rebuild and expand the structure, reinforcing its foundations and maintaining its sacred geometry. Consequently, Caliph al-Mamun of the Abbasid Caliphate undertook significant renovations to address wear and tear. During this period, the Kaaba was adorned with silk and gold drapery, emphasizing its significance as a revered center of Islamic worship. However, during the Ottoman era, various renovations and expansions were carried out to accommodate the increasing number of pilgrims. The Ottoman Sultan Murad IV also reinforced the Kaaba's structure in the 17th century. Interestingly, in modern times, the Saudi government has overseen several renovations and expansions to accommodate the growing number of pilgrims performing Haji and Umrah. The latest major renovation took place in 2013, involving the replacement of the Kiswa, the black cloth covering, and expanding the Mata area around the Kaaba. While historical records and Islamic narratives are clear about the reconstructions and renovations, there are occasional controversial incidents and unverified claims that suggest more drastic events, such as the complete destruction of the Kaaba. Some stories may circulate suggesting that external forces destroyed or targeted the Kaaba. However, these claims lack credible historical evidence and are often rooted in conspiracy theories rather than factual accounts. The Kaaba's endurance through reconstructions and renovations emphasizes its resilience as a sacred structure, inviting believers to reflect on the continuity of faith and the enduring message of monotheism. The reverence Muslims hold for the Kaaba extends beyond its physical presence, encapsulating the spiritual significance it holds in the hearts of believers worldwide. The Kaaba's rich history reflects the profound journey of faith from its construction by Prophet Ibrahim and Prophet Ismail to its reconsecration by Prophet Muhammad. The Kaaba symbolizes the timeless unity of the Muslim Ummah and the enduring connection between humanity and the divine. So, it is said, that while the Kaaba has witnessed renovations and expansions over the centuries, it has never been entirely destroyed. Its sacred geometry aligned with the heavens remains a focal point for Muslims, guiding them in prayer and uniting them in worship. The Kaaba's enduring presence underscores its eternal significance in the hearts and souls of believers, making it a symbol of unity, devotion, and unwavering commitment to the worship of the one true God. Consequently, over the years, 
controversies have arisen regarding the impact of Wahhabi influence on the religious practices around the Kaaba. Some critics argue that Wahhabism's strict interpretation has led to the removal of certain rituals and practices traditionally associated with the pilgrimage to Mecca. The Wahhabi influence brought about a serious interpretation of Islamic practices, challenging some long-standing traditions associated with the veneration of saints and tombs. Wahhabism emphasized a literal interpretation of Islamic texts and discouraged practices deemed potential deviations from pure monotheism. This included aspects of Sufi mysticism and certain traditions observed around the Kaaba. Wahhabi authorities have been accused of altering the area around the Kaaba and discouraging certain acts that were part of the rich culture of Islamic traditions. However, while Wahhabism has sought to purify Islamic practices, traditional beliefs among Muslims emphasize the eternal sanctity of the Kaaba, the Quranic verses, and prophetic traditions affirm the permanence of the Kaaba as the Qibla, the direction Muslims face during prayers. However, despite the changes brought about by Wahhabi influence, the Kaaba remains at the center of the Islamic world. It is a focal point for all believers to pay more attention and draw closer to God. It is again a wake-up call for humanity to hasten their belief in God and engage in good deeds before their time. The Bible clarifies that the consequence of sin is death, and this is majorly the eternal death an eternal separation from God. So in the wake of these happenings in Kaaba, individuals are encouraged to forsake their evil ways and acknowledge the one true God, through whom is eternal redemption forever after this age. We've come to the end of this video. What do you think about Kaaba and its existence? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching our video. If you like this video, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring the bell to receive notifications about the latest videos from our channel. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again in the next videos. Have a great day and see you soon.